welcome to another wonderful day at Glen Haven United Methodist Church. Would you please rise if you're able for the light of Christ? So forget about yourself. So forget about yourself. Concentrate. Concentrate on him. I know worship him. Yes, Lord. So forget about yourself. Concentrate on him. I know worship him. So forget about yourself. Concentrate on him. And worship Christ our Lord. Worship him. They said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, for this is the day yes. that God has made. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad in it. This is the second Sunday of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We should be happy about that. Yes. If you're happy to be in the house of God one more time, <laughs> praise ye the Lord. Will you please join me in the word of prayer? God of love, God of life. We welcome your spirit in this place and over the live stream. God, we pray, dear God, that you move in any type of form, shape, or fashion you choose to, dear God. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The songwriter says, Oh, how I love Jesus. Can we testify to that this morning? Join me this morning as we deliver song number 170 in your hymnals. Please turn to it and let's sing with uplifted voices. Oh, how I love Jesus. Yes. 
Dios. Aleluya. Aleluya. Thank you, God. Oh, my goodness. Everybody think these songs have to get all sophisticated. Sometimes you just need to sing. Just open your mouth and sing. It doesn't matter if you have a good voice or bad voice. God wants to hear from you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's bless God in this place. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. He's worthy. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. Mm -hmm. Wow. I feel that. It's time for our morning announcements. Please receive Sister Natasha Pope. Morning, family. Oh, yes, Lord. How I love Jesus. It's because he first loved us. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you for that love. Thank you for that love. It's good to see everyone here in the house and also our online worshipers. Welcome. I see you on the chat. We have six people in the chat. Uh, if you would type your name in there so we could and say hi so we can call you by name. I see uh, Tay. Taylor Rutledge, the uh, pastor and Sister Danny's daughter. Anybody else? Just type in and let's have a good time online. Amen? Amen. Everyone should have gotten a worship guide. And inside of it, this is something that Pastor really wanted to do to help bring everybody together. We have a calendar. It's a calendar of events for the month of April. And you can see what's going on in each day. And if you would, just kind of hold on to that and put it on your refrigerator and remind yourself of the different things that we have. We're very busy. And um, I think that's what God wants us to do, to be busy in the community and busy taking care of his house. Amen? Amen. You're welcome to follow along with our announcements. Upcoming happenings at the Haven. It is April, April yeah. birthdays. Glenn Haven would like to wish our April birthday celebrants a very happy birthday. We have Paula Kennebrew on the 1st and Precious Watkins on the 18th. Precious is uh, one of uh, Mother Boyd's great-grandchildren. Amen? Yeah, amen? And treats are served on the 4th Sunday in honor of our celebrants. Children's Church. Coming from Psalm 127 and 3, children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring, a reward from him. Truly they are. Attention all children and youth. Join us for Children's Church on second and third Sundays of the month during morning worship. Please bring your iPad, your cell phone, or your Bible so we can look up and study our scripture lessons. And snacks will be served. Ministry opportunities. I tell you, there's a lot to do in this church. And amen. And we would like to welcome those who would like to serve a little bit more or maybe you haven't found your niche. Well, we have lots of things that you can be engaged in. Have you thought about how you can serve more at the Haven? Below are some areas where we need some help. Please see the following contact persons. Uh, for church cleaning, uh, Sister Angel Vaughn. Angel, can you raise your hand, please? Yes. All right. She and her family uh, cleaned the church, wiped out every pew, every pew. Every uh, pew. vacuumed the whole sanctuary. It's a big place. Yes. And, and Sister Angel, she was here until 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon taking care of everything. So we really, truly appreciate that. So if you would like to be a part of the church cleaning, uh, that would really be a blessing. My mom used to say, many hands make heavy work light. Amen. So if we would like to be a part of church cleaning, please see Sister Angel. And then our communion stewards, Sister Joan Miller. Raise your hand, please. She's right in the back. This beautiful communion table does not just poof, happen. Right. Sister Joan comes on the Saturday before first Sunday to prepare a beautiful table. So if you would like to be a part of the communion stewards, please see Sister Joan Miller. Also, we have a dance ministry, Sister Jonelle Chapman. She's not here right now, but she is probably online. Hey, Joni. 
and we have a dance ministry. We have adults, but we do have room for children as well. So if you, since Joni is not here, if you would like to speak with me, if you would like to join the dance ministry and the dancers, um, the angels of praise, they um, minister on fourth Sundays, youth and young adult Sundays. Then we also have sound and media ministry. Uh, Dr. Darrell is in charge of that. So if you would like to work the camera or do the PowerPoint or you know click the PowerPoint, please I'll do anything uh, to really help out in the back. Sister Danny and Sister Yolanda are faithful servants, but every once in a while we have to pivot because maybe they have to go out of town or something like that. So we need they might have to sing. Or then be pulled in another direction, so we definitely need that help. Then we have the men's ministry, uh, Brother David Chapman, and he's online too. Hi, Dave. And they, um, he's in charge of the men's ministry. And check this out. On second Saturdays, we have Sharing Saturday. The marquee is already up. So the men, check this out, the men have purchased a basketball goal. And what they want to do is be more visible in the community. Now, if you spend any time over here on Saturdays, children are running up and down, even in this area, and it's really not safe. There's no park. They need a place to play. They need a place to connect. Jonathan's been working on, all, on that, um, that goal. I think uh, Brother Mike as well, uh, just trying to work and get that goal up. So on second Saturdays, there's a little bit of activity, and they're going to come over. When you see somebody playing, I don't know about you, when I was, in El when I was younger, you see some friends outside playing, and what did you do? I'm going outside and play. I don't know if they do that now, but it was always a good time. It wasn't playing. It's like, we're just going to have fun. So the men's ministry, if you would like to be a part of that ministry, please see Brother David, or you can speak to me since he's not here today. And then also the ushers and the nursery team, you can see me. We need some more ushers uh, volunteering just to kind of stand in when someone else can't. And also the nursery team, we have, as you can see on the calendar, we have Children's Church on second and third uh, Sundays. And I have the elementary, middle, and high school, one room schoolhouse. However, we need someone to be able to monitor and, and uh, actually use the nursery. We have a beautiful nursery, carpeted, uh, a slide, balls, those little balls that they can throw around. Just a crib for the babies. It was a beautiful um, nursery, and we haven't used it since COVID, so we want to bring that back. So if there are any of the ministry opportunities, please uh, see any one of the people, uh, contact persons in the bulletin. I want to in interrupt Sister Massage for just a second. I want to speak a little bit more about the, the choir. Even though it wasn't a, sp a specific announcement in here, I want you to know that we are at the point right now where God is doing something with our music ministry, and we want to make sure that we are in position to accelerate that. Now, my question to you is, is, are there any of you that might want to be a part of what God is beginning to put together? If you've sung in, in choirs before, if you, if you have the passion or desire, you sing in your, in, your, in your showers, or you just have that, that praise spirit, because sometimes the spirit is what we need even, even more than we need the voice. Now, of course, the voice helps. Bless your, bless your heart. If, you're gonna, if, you, if you think about possibly joining the, the choir, ask yourself, is this one of my gifts? If it's not, you might be able to serve us in another way. But we want to make sure that we do our best for God. And I want to make it official. We are, um, we are inviting people who may want to be a part of our music ministry in, in the form of using your voices. Let us know. Let me know. Um, if you're a musician and you want to volunteer and be a part of what's going on, we're not necessarily close to that idea either. Okay? Amen? So anyway, I just thank you for letting me interrupt you on that. Okay? Amen. Plenty of good room to minister and to take care of the house of the Lord. Thank you. The Walk Club. All right, let's give God some glory for getting healthier and stronger. Please join us for our first walk. It's this month, Saturday, April 27, 2024, at 10 a.m. For more information, please see Sister Shereen. Sister Shereen, raise your hand, please. And I think we had, we had an administrative council meeting yesterday, and she said we have about 25 people signed up already. All right. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Community health fair. Everyone, save that date. 
It's in June, Saturday, June 8th, 2024, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the church parking lot. And if you would like to be a part of this effort, if you have any medical background or if you have any connections, please see Dr. Darrell if you'd like to participate in any way. Uh, this is a vision of Pastor Rutledge, and he wants all of us to be able to move out into the community and to be able to share our resources with our brothers and sisters out there. Amen? Amen. Weekly and monthly happenings at the Haven, we have Wednesday night Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. and Thursday night prayer call at 7 p.m. on second and third Thursdays. The Zoom information is there. We have inter intercessory prayer every Saturday, first Saturday of the month at 11 a.m. Had a wonderful time yesterday in the Lord. Uh, sharing Saturday, food box distribution and clothing closet is every second Saturday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the church parking lot. We have Christ and Coffee, hot beverage station every third Sunday of the month. If you don't drink coffee, we have teas and cocoa. And Manhood and Godhood's ministry will meet, that's our men's ministry, will meet on third and fifth Saturdays at 10 a.m. And as always, we're in church-wide intercessory prayer. We have a few more names on the list. Uh, but we actually have two of them in the house right now, Brother Junie and uh, Sister Joan Hazelwood. Yeah. Raise your hands. We have been missing them. Yes, yes, and they are here in the house. Family is here. <laughs> Amen. Um, so we appreciate you being here. We know they were uh, under the weather, but then, of course, their family had a few um, deaths. But they're here back in the house, and we're glad to see you. So continue to play, pray for Brother Teddy, Sister Rosalind, Sister Teresa, Sister Lorraine, Sister Lula, Sister Elaine, uh, Brother Junie, Sister Joan Hazelwood, and then Amber Miller. She's here today. Amber, raise your hand, sweetie. She was having some challenges with that foot, and I see you walking well. Praise God. Continue to be healed. We're praying for you, little one. And also bereavement, uh, the Michael Barron family. Please be in prayer for them. I believe his name is Eric. Eric, exactly. Had a, Eric Robinson. Yeah. Amen. So we're in prayer for your family. Thank you so much. Please continue to be in prayer for our entire Glenwood Church family, Glenhaven Church family, our Glenwood community, our city, our state, our country, and our whole world. Please continue to be in prayer for people all over the world who are in need and for peace and righteousness in our government. These are our announcements. Amen. Thank you for the announcement, Sister Natasha. Thank you. A lot going on at the Haven. Amen. We are busy doing the labor of love. But I'm going to take a moment right here in this part of the worship service to recognize a young man that's been um, been sharing and caring and thinking about us ever since I began Glenhaven. I met him, um, I, I guess, at my, through another pastor, Reverend Dr. Pace. Um, I met him at his fruit stand. And um, that's how I got involved in the community, and I would go up there, and he'd be selling fruit, and um, we began to engage in conversation, and this young man is behind the scenes. You don't know him, but his name is Mr. Ralph Berry. Would you please stand, Mr. Ralph Berry? And, and the reason I want to bring this up, because he, is, he has been behind the scenes of the food pantry. Mm. Amen. You don't know nothing about this man. Amen. Amen. I didn't have to really coerce him. I didn't have to twist his arm, Roslyn. But I asked him, would you be or want to help us in our food pantry as we give our food in the community? And he has a fruit stand up the street near 285. You go straight up the street, brother Al, you know what I'm talking about. You look to the left in that service station. He been in that fruit stand for how many years? 35 wow. years, a long time. He's been serving the community. I remember when his um, wife passed, I was there for him and prayed with him and gave him words of encouragement. But he kept moving forward. But I want to present you 
Brother Ralph Berry a certificate of appreciation from this church because he's been doing this for nine, as long as I've been here, nine years. That's how long I've been knowing. But thank you so much for blessing us, for helping us in the community. I appreciate it, my brother. Amen. That's what it's all about, community involvement. Community involvement. Do, do you have anything you want to say, Brother Ray? Okay. Yeah, okay. But, go ahead. Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning, good morning. congregation. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to give thanks to God Almighty for being able to walk into the church and share some time with y'all. Uh, my first entry with Pastor Kenneth was uh, nine, ten years ago. It was uh, my first home in Trap County was across the street. So this was the majority uh, white church at the time. But my wife and I would come over here and visit often because I was reared in the United Methodist Intermediate Church in Florida. My father-in-law was a pastor for 52 years. So I kind of know about how things are taking over the church and how I think it's a good time to do this. And any time that y'all need any help you with something or fundraising or anything in the church, just let me know. I'm just right up the street. Anytime y'all want to stop by, have a need for anything, that's what we're there for. So we don't mind sharing. Amen. Thank you, brother. That's what it's all about, community involvement. And he's been with us for a very long time. Thank you for your service and what you do for us. And if you would like to get some good fruit, he always has something for you. He not, not only does fruit, but he does barbecue. He puts together a good barbecue plate and all the wonderful things. Again, thank you, brother. Barry for being there for Glen Haven United Methodist Church. As we continue in worship, we will continue in worship by affirming our faith. Would you please stand if you're able? It's on the screen, but it's also in your red hymn book as we prepare to affirm our faith. As we affirm our faith together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He is sitting in heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this you shall come to be judged, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church Universal, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. time and we have a lot to be thankful for we do like I said I thank God for our own fruit man brother Barry Amen. but it's good to see members back in the house of God sister Nancy it's good to see yeah. you wave your hand sister Nancy Joe she been out for a while sister, we do call sister Nancy but it's good to see you it's so good to see the Hazelwoods back in the house. Natasha already recognized them. It's good to see you. Good to see you. God has been the blessing business. We've been praying for you as well. Uh, I think Sister Rosalind been under the weather. It's good to see you in the house of God and many others. It's good to see each and every one of you. We have a lot to be prayerful about. We have a lot to be thankful for. We had a wonderful intercessory prayer meeting on yesterday. And I'm just going to roll down the road. We got a ton of names on here. So if the name is already on here, just say hallelujah. And we'll be praying for it. We're praying for Brother David Searcy, uh, Janae Patterson. We pray for the Hazelwoods. Pray for Brother Teddy, Sister Lorraine, 
Sister Roslyn, Sister Nikki Thompson, um, to Teresa Thompson, Butch Searcy, Lula Rivers, Elaine Turner, the Settles family, the Winters family, single moms for Kennedy, and in all single moms, Sister Nancy Jones, Sister Maureen, we have Sister Maureen, um, uh, Brother Robert, Pat Wilson's son, right? I got that right, Brother Robert. Um, uh, the Hibbert family, um, Ephraim, the birth of Swain, uh, MJ Mason, uh, the mother, Nikki, Travel Mercies, um, Brandon, L, Eric, um, Amber Miller, Eric, the Robinson family, um, and many others. Any other names that we are bidding? That's a long list. Anybody else would like to be put on this prayer list? We keep this prayer list here, and we pray over this every first Saturday, and I usually have it with me on uh, intercessory prayer night. Are there any other names we would like to add to the list? Yes? Francine Jones. Any other name? Yes, ma'am. Candace Smith. Thank you. Anyone else? Ernest Dixon. Ernest Dixon. Dixon. that being said, we thank you for the names that we have lifted up in prayer. So let's prepare to go before the throne of grace, believing and trusting, knowing that God will answer prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs sometimes bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer all powerful and all knowing heavenly father we humbly come before your throne of grace and mercy this morning first of all God we want to honor you just to say thank you Thank you, dear God, for watching over us last night and protecting us from danger seen and unseen. Thank you, dear God, for covering our families in the blood of Jesus. We thank you, dear God, for a good portion of health and strength that you allowed us to be clothed in our right mind, dear God. God, we thank you for the blessings of the return of family members, dear God. We thank you that you allowed the Hazelwoods to be healed and returned, God. We thank you, dear God, for Sister Nancy Jones, dear God, that you healed her and allowed her to come back to service, God. We thank you, dear God, that you allowed Sister Rosslyn to be in the midst this morning, God, and many others, dear God. We thank you, dear God, for the grace of health and wholeness, God. God, we thank you for people like Brother Barry, who, dear God, that ministers in the community with his fruit stand and show, do it with a smile and, 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 and a wonderful heart. God, we thank you for Brother Barry that he sometimes gives all he can to this church, dear God, and he doesn't ask for a dime a lot of times. God, we thank you, dear God, for Brother Barry. God, we just thank you for the happenings at the Haven, God. We thank you for the ministries and for all those who are willing to minister to the community, God. We thank you, dear God. We thank you, dear God, for the one that always cleaned this church with a smile, God, that she worked so diligently, dear God. We thank you for Angel, dear God. God, we thank you, dear God, for the many happenings and the ministries that you are pouring into this community, God. But God, there are people today 
that need a touch from you right now, God. You've already heard all the names, dear God. You heard the names on yesterday, dear God. But we thank you for healing Amber Miller, dear God. We, God, we thank you, dear God, that you're healing Francine Jones, dear God. And we pray for healing, dear God, for Candace Smith, dear God, and Ernest Dixon, dear God, and Joanne Chapman, dear God. God, we pray, dear God, that you would reach into their homes right now in the name of Jesus and touch them in a powerful way, dear God, in the name of Jesus, dear God. We know that it's by Jesus' strife that they can't be nothing but healed, dear God. So, God, we claim victory right now over their bodies, dear God. We ask you to heal the, the, the all the bones, heal the organs, dear God. Heal the blood cells, dear God, that you remove anything that keeps them from being the best they can be from you, dear God. We thank you for the healing power, dear God. We believe it, dear God. We receive it, dear God. We pray that you will go into the hospitals, dear God, and to the homes, dear God, and to the hospice care, dear God, and touch in a powerful way, dear God. Somebody need a mighty miracle today, dear God, and you're the one that can supply it right now, dear God that you are the doctor in the hospital. You're the specialist, dear God. You're the only anesthesiologist that they can need, dear God. So we pray for the anointing right now in the name of Jesus. We claim deliverance and freedom, dear God, over this live stream, in this church, all over the world, God. God, we thank you for the mighty power and works of your hand, dear God, for allowing the sunshine of health hold on to the lives of your people, God. God, we pray for those, not only for physical healing, but we pray for those who need mental and emotional healing. Somebody was claiming suicide on the other day, God, but you allowed them, you reached into their minds and granted them Peace that surpasses all understanding, dear God. Somebody need a mental healing revelation, God. Somebody need to be transformed by the renewing of their minds, dear God. We pray for renewed minds in the name of Jesus. We pray for peaceful minds, dear God, in the name of Jesus. We pray that all hang-ups and anxieties be removed from their mind in the name of Jesus. Depression is gone. Sadness is gone. Wholeness and healthness is there, God. We thank you for the healing of the mind. God, we pray for wisdom in our government, God. The enemy is trying to take over the government, God, but you won't allow that, dear God. So we pray for wisdom in the government. We need Christian faith leaders, God. We need a person that will stand in the White House and stand for Christianity and doing right, God, for the world. God, we pray for our bishop, our district superintendent, and pastors all over the world, God. We pray for everyone under the sound of my voice in this sanctuary. They might not have spoken it out, God, but you already know what the situation is, dear God. So, God, we thank you for granting them the blessings, dear God. God, we pray for our educational system as the teachers go back, as the students go back, and the staff go back, God, that you would meet them in the classroom, God. And God, we pray, dear God, that the students listen to the teachers, dear God, and that the teachers be patient and understanding with students, God. God, we pray for protection for our children, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, God. We pray for protection, God. God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for listening, great Father. Thank you, dear God, that we know there is hope for the hurting. There is hope for the hurting. So, God, we believe it and we receive it that the prayers 
of the righteous availeth much, and that prayers are answered. It's in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. And let all God's people say it, amen. Amen. And glory to God. Amen. And it will be so, and it is done. Thank you. Amen. As we continue in worship, we will continue in worship by the giving of the wonderful gift that God has blessed us with. You can never beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. So don't even try. Just give what God has blessed you with as the ushers come forward as we prepare to bless God with our giving. We also have a, a basket. Um, Jimmy has that basket. That basket is for the food pantry. So we thank you for what you've already done. We thank you for what you give. Thank you for those who are already giving stuff like rice and canned goods already to the food pantry. But we love to help somebody in the community. We helped a, a bunch of people last month. And we pray that we can do the same thing. So Jimmy has the basket for the food pantry. Let us pray. God, we thank you for blessing us beyond measure. God, we can count our blessings and we can name them one by one. So God, we take in our one blessing and give it back to you. Bless it for the uplifting of your kingdom in this community on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy. Blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father. lessons. Today's a little different. Today I'm going to be one of the readers of the scriptures. Amen. What a blessing for me.
I'll be reading the New Testament epistle from John 1, chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, and chapter 2. And the New Testament gospel, both, both these are from the New Testament, we understand that, both these are from the New Testament. Um, Sister Joan Miller will, will read John 20, verses 19 through 21. The New Testament epistle. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declared to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you that we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us and truly fellowship, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his words is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'll be reading from the, the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of his nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. 
Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Please join me as we prepare the, our song of preparation. Number 368, My Hope is Built. The songwriter says it's built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. standing today? Are you standing on solid ground? Are you standing on ground that's sinking? Mm. Only on Christ, only in Christ can you stand, Paul. Because we stand in a lot of places. We can stand in the grocery line. We can stand in the food line. We can stand in many, many places. But only standing on Christ, you're standing in a good place. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you for reminding us, Dr. Pope, for being standing on a good place. You've already heard from the reading. Thank you, sir. We already heard from the reading of the, of the lessons this morning. I would like to bring your attention to Gospel of John, chapter 15. John, chapter 15, and verse number 5. John, chapter 15, and verse number 5. And I'm reading the, the, the later portion of it, like the last maybe seven words of Gospel of John, chapter 15, and verse number 5. And Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. In other words, my brothers and sisters, this morning, the topic that the Lord has given me to preach about, the name is the life of dependence, living a life of dependence, living a life of dependence. Will you please join me in the word of prayer? Dear God, I thank you for this moment and that you allow me to have the opportunity, dear God. God, I'm just a small piece of the equation, God, so I just pray, dear God, that your words fall on fertile ground and that it reach over the live streams and in the sanctuary and that the words will speak to the people's hearts, dear God, as I pray that the words that you allow me to speak be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The life of dependence. You know, depending on God alone does not mean we act foolishly. Jesus did not jump off the pinnacle to prove that he couldn't depend on God. Because he didn't have his own agenda. Jesus didn't come to have his own agenda. Between trusting God and putting God to the test. Mm -hmm. Depending on God alone doesn't mean we dispense with the gifts. For example, a person with strep throat may refuse to go to the doctor saying in a hoarsely, I'm going to depend on God alone to heal me. And that's okay. Or a person driving a car may close their eyes as they release the stirring wheel. I'm going to depend on God alone to drive me home. In other words, these actions would be what you call foolish. God has provided us with doctors and medicine to heal us. He has given us brains that we need to steer our car in. Ain't that right, Brother Al? He can still depend, we can still depend on God as we visit the doctor's office, knowing that all healing ultimately comes from God. And we can still depend on God as we drive, knowing that God will protect us as we drive safely down the road. But a life of dependence is all about depending on God. Because the problem is, we are independent people. We like to do everything our way. We want to do everything our way. We want to play God Jr. and think that we got it all together, Brother Barry. No, it's not like that. We have to depend on God. But I submit to you several reasons why a Christian's life may be said a life of constant dependence. Mm -hmm. Number one, we are dependent upon Christ for salvation. The Bible tells us, for by grace we have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift from God. In other words, since Adam and Eve disobeyed the Lord in the garden, sin has transpired, has taken over the world, but we needed somebody to come down from heaven to make things right. When I think of the dependent life of Christ through salvation. It's like a door. It's like a door. One helpful way to think of Jesus is to imagine a doorway leading into a nice restaurant. God is in the restaurant, inviting everyone to eat with him. There's only one door, and Jesus stands at it 
holding it open for you. In other words, when Jesus opened the door, what he's doing is he's not blocking the door. He's opening the door for you to walk right on in it. Now, there are some people who believe that Jesus is not the way. There are so many religions. They are different, and that's okay. That's their place. But the Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can get through heaven unless Jesus Christ is there. In other words, when Jesus is at the door, Brother Barry, you already going to be all right. You don't need no reservation, Paula. Yeah. You know, sometimes you have to go to Houston's and Applebee's and all these different places, Roslyn, to get on the uh, registrations. And, and then you might have to wait for 45 minutes to get in there. As a matter of fact, me and Danny went out the other day to eat, Paula, and it took 45 minutes. We had to wait 45 minutes to sit in the car and just look at each other's lovely faces. But the thing about it, though, Brother Junior, that when you come to Jesus, when you have faith in Jesus, it says, by grace you have saved through faith. When you have faith in Jesus, the door is already open up for you. In other words, you don't have to worry about 45 minutes. You don't have to wait 45 minutes. It's a matter of seconds, Sister Nancy. So we are dependent upon Christ for salvation. Number two. We are constantly dependent upon the word of God for spiritual growth. Peter put it this way, like newborn infants long for the pure milk, spiritual milk, so that you may grow into salvation. Notice he said, newborn infants, pure spiritual milk, that you may grow into salvation. You know, one of the characteristics of children, some of them like milk. Matter of fact, my grandson, he, my grandson like milk. Y'all, on a word he says, on Sister Moraine, milk. Milk. When he get up in the morning, milk. 45 later, milk. He don't say that about, I don't want no bread, I don't want no piece of meat. He said, I won't milk. But you know Sister Nancy, milk makes the body good. Yes, In other words, the word of God is our milk. Yes. In other words, when we drink on the word of God, we learn to grow spiritually, Paul. We learn to be more like Jesus Christ. The word of God has information, instructions, and examples to help us get through this life. Yes. And the thing about it, Sometimes, if you don't get involved in this spiritual milk, you can't grow. That's why my grandson said milk, milk. Because he know he's constantly growing, June. He's constantly growing because he's drinking milk over and over. Yeah, he's eating other food. Now, get it wrong now. Don't get it twisted. He does eat other food. He like his um, popcorn. He like his um, um, apple chips. He, he eats those things. But the thing about it, it's something about drinking that milk does good for the body. But when we lose ourselves in the word of God, we grow spiritually. We grow mentally. We don't worry about all the different types of conflicts coming to our world. As a matter of fact, on the right of Psalm says, the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The Bible is our road map of life. If you want to know how to treat somebody right, look at the word of God. If you want to know how to think right, look at the word of God. As a matter of fact, Paul talks about love. He, that he wrote that entire 1 Corinthians 13. It's all about love. He says, love is this, love is that. Love doesn't seek its own way. You want to learn how to love somebody? Read what Paul is talking about. So when we Depend on God. We have to depend on God for our spiritual growth. The problem is, sometimes we get caught up eating junk food, processed food, food that's unhealthy to us, food like hatred, that's unhealthy. Food with having a bad attitude, that's unhealthy. When you eat this processed food, this fake food, you can't grow at all. 
That's why you need to grow on the word of God. The word of God is compacted with all types of nutrients of love and trusting and caring. We constantly depend on the word of God to grow. Thirdly, we constantly depend upon prayer for spiritual power. That goes without saying. We talk about that. You got to be a praying person. We are constantly depending upon prayer for spiritual power. The right James said, therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. Praying for one another so that you may be healed. But he says that the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Now, the thing about this righteous thing, you can't be righteous without Jesus Christ. You can't be right without God. And when you think about prayer, prayer is an ultimate weapon against the enemy. You want to fight off your enemies, pray for them. You want to fight off problems on your job, pray about that. If you're going through a struggle in your relationship, pray about that. You are connected with something and a force that's so incredible that it can move mountains. Let me make it elementary then. The things in your household work because of electricity. Electricity is an invisible power that gives you visible privileges. It turns the lights on, the TV on, the toaster on, your computer on, whatever you got. I guarantee you, you have to hook it up to electricity. But none of these things work even though they have access to electricity unless you Flip the switch on. Right. You've got to make a connection before anything can work. In other words, prayer is like that. Prayer is electricity that you plug into the power source of God. So if you need something to be moved, you need to move, be plugged into the power source of God. And when you're plugged into the power source of God, you're plugged into a power that's incredible that can light up the Empire State yes, Building. Yes, because when we live a life of constant prayer, things begin to work, Brother Barry. I like the way I think, I think me and Dr. Austin talked about it a long time ago. We use these acronyms. We need to Push. Push. You know what that means. Pray until what? Something happens. If you're not praying, nothing can happen. But if you pray, something will happen. And the thing about it, they say prayer changes things, Jimmy. But I tell you what, keep on praying long enough. I don't care how long you got to pray. Keep on praying long enough. Prayer might not change that thing immediately, but it's going to change the way you think about things. Because prayer is all that we need. My mom would say all the time when I used to uh, be stressed out about my job and stressed about working the school system and dealing with some difficult situations, my mom always say this, Sister Joan Hayeswood, honey child, just pray about it. Quit tripping about it, just pray about it. That's what it is, and that's what it's all about. And I got it, Paula. Pray about it. If my bones are hurting, I'm going to pray about it, Sister Nancy. If I ain't in my right mind, Roger, I'm going to pray about it. If I ain't acting right, I'm going to pray about it. If things are not going right in the family, I'm going to pray about it. We need to push, pray until something happens. As long as we hooked up to that invisible power through Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit smiles upon you, comes upon you through prayer. Number four, we are constantly to dependent upon fellowship of mutual encouragement. We are constantly dependent upon fellowship of mutual encouragement. You heard it read today, 1 John 1 and 3. What we have seen and heard, we also declare to you so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. In other words, when you're connected to Jesus Christ, when you're connected to the Father, you have fellowship with one another. That means that we come together as a family. We fellowship together 
in that meeting yesterday, we were fellowshipping together. I learned things about my comrades that I didn't know about them. We fellowship together. When you come to prayer meeting, you're fellowshipping together. When you come to Bible study, you're fellowshipping together. We are a family under the umbrella of God. As a matter of fact, the human family unit is meant to be a small model of how the family of God works. Christians are called to treat each other as if everyone is brother and sister. Amen. So it's good when you see somebody, hello, my brother, hello, my sister. You know, Christians can say stuff like that. That means I know I'm in the right place, Brett. That means that I'm in good company, you know. When Jesus announced this, he said that whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother, my sister, and mother. In other words, Jesus was pointing out that spiritual relationships are just as binding as physical relationships. So that means that when I met you nine years ago, up there by your fruit stand, there was an interconnection right there. But guess what? It took another sister to connect these two brothers. You know what I'm saying? So after nine years of connection, I can understand it. You are my big brother in Christ. In other words, that's what we call the universal church, the universal family, because it takes a village to raise each other and children. We should be um, connecting with each other, calling each other, talking to each other, encouraging each other. We are constantly dependent upon fellowship for mutual encouragement. We should be encouraging one another. That's what it's all about. That's why we worship together, we pray together, we study together, and, this, and guess what? In two weeks or three weeks, we're going to be walking together. Walking and exercise is good. Breathing in the wonderful fresh air of God over at Columbia Drive, led by the coach. I call her Shereen the coach. the coach. The coach. We are constantly dependent upon each other. But as I come to a close, you know, sometimes, Sister Nancy, even Christians, Christians can have doubts. Sometimes the enemy can just bear down on you with all types of stress and strife. And sometimes you can have doubts. As a matter of fact, we heard the story about doubting Thomas. As a matter of fact, Thomas said, I won't believe. And he around his brothers, all around his brothers and sisters, because the women was the first at the tomb. They were the first preachers. But Thomas was around his brothers and sisters in the upper room, and, and Thomas said, Brad, I'm not going to believe it until I see it. In other words, Thomas just, he, I guess he was from Missouri, the show me state. I guess he wasn't from where he was supposed to be from, but he wanted to see it, to believe it. But you know what? That's what I love about Jesus. Jesus always had the right thing to say. Jesus said, Thomas, you have believed because you have But he said, blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believe. Mm -hmm. That means that's you and you and you and you. If you believe it, you already conceived it. Amen. In other words, the God who was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace is with you. Amen. In other words, the same God who was with Daniel in the lion den is with you. The same God who with the shepherd boy David who fought the giant is with you. The same God who helped the Israelite go into the promised land is with you. The same God who created the universe has a plan and a purpose for you, you, and you, and you. God is with you. But Jesus brings it home, Rosalind. Jesus brings it home. He says in John 15 and 5, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. That means you got to depend on Jesus. Without me. You can do nothing. In other words, which means 
You can't breathe without God. You can't see without God. You can't hear without God. You can't speak without God. You can't feel without God. You can't work without God. You can't hope without God. You can't make no money without God. You can't even walk straight without God. Everything comes through God because you got to depend on God. Without me, you can do nothing. In other words, whatever you got going on, I just stopped by to tell you, it's not impossible. It's not impossible. But Paul brings it home as I close with real, and he says, I can do all things through Christ. Who what? Strengthens me. In other words, you might not do every single thing, but it's through what? Christ I can pump this weight. It's through Christ that I can make it work out. It's through Christ that I'm healed. It's through Christ my financial situation is okay. It's through Christ I can do all things. Children, you can make it in school through Christ. You can pass them grades through Christ. Listen to the teachers. You can do it through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. Living a life of dependence means that you're depending on a power bigger than you could ever imagine. Quit trying to act independent. Quit trying to do it on your own. I stopped trying to do it on my own, Sister Erlene, a long time ago. I had to learn that I learned that I learned that I cannot be the best person I can be unless I'm connected to God in the name of Jesus. I am totally sold out. That's why my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. That's where my hope is at. There is hope for the hurting. There's hope for those who are hearing. But without God, without the Lord, you can do nothing. For this is the word of God for the people of God. Yes. Thanks be to God. Yes. Come on. My brothers and sisters, family and friends, we come to a very important part of this worship service. It's okay to listen to Dr. Pope's great voice. It's okay to listen to the wonderful music of the musicians. It's okay to hear the wonderful scriptures read, but guess what? The invitation to Christian discipleship is the most important part of the service. So that means that when you make a conscious decision to open up your heart and let Jesus in, then you mean, that means that you're going to profess your faith and be part of the heavenly kingdom. With that being said, the invitation to the Christian discipleship is before us. There may be someone here in the church that would like to have a church home or don't have a church home. You're in the right place at the right time. And by being here, we can grow together in love. We grow together in faith. We are not a perfect church, but we know a perfect God. And we do everything. This is Natasha as a labor of love. We love you all dearly. But the bottom line is, are you willing to come, to launch out into the deep, to step out on faith, to join this ministry? As the music ministry comes in song, the invitation to Christian discipleship is for you. Would you like to join this church? Sometimes you can know that God has got you because you can feel his touch. The songwriter said he touched me and suddenly nothing was the same.
We will continue in worship with God through the service of Word of Table 2. It's found on page 12, and I'm quite sure it's possibly going to be on the screen. As we prepare for the great communion, as we prepare our hearts and minds to have this wonderful banquet. Page 12. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Together, merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbor, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us a new covenant by water and the spirit on the night in which he gave himself up for us he took bread and gave thanks to you broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is your body which is given for you 
Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Forever. Amen. You have the body of Christ that was broken for you. Take now and eat. You have the cup which represents his blood which was poured out for the remission and forgiveness of your sins. Take now and drink. Remember who you are. Remember whose you are. Remember your baptism. Remember your profession of faith. For this is the will of God. Amen. Amen. I know. 
this wonderful day of worship. We pray that you found something in this particular setting that has touched your spirit. We thank God for each and every one of you. We appreciate you coming by, stopping by and pitching your tent right here on this day. Let's continue to be prayerful for all those on our prayer list. If you know somebody, give them a call. Be prayerful for people always, because people need your prayers. We thank God for you. We thank God for those over the live stream that you play a big part in your giving as well. We appreciate you so, so much. Thank God for our music ministry, our worship leader, our media ministry, all the ushers, everyone that participated in this worship experience. I thank God for you. It does not go unappreciated. Brother Barry, thank you. Glad to see you here. Don't let this be the last time we see you in the house of God. Because I know you're a busy, busy man. So as we prepare to leave this place, but never ever the presence of God, would you please rise as the light of Christ, as the act light come. and keep you and may God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you may God bless your going out and coming in may God protect you as you leave this place but never ever the presence of God remember that to, be, to depend on God is to depend on everything go in grace go in love in Jesus name we pray amen in all your Have a blessed week.